So, um, I did kind of, unfortunately, spoil things for myself a little bit. I was kind of curious to see, um... I was, okay, so like last night I was messing around with more dwarves. Because, uh, low stack, I asked for some help trying to fix the digging events, if you guys recall. And he did. He fixed it. So, I'm playing with a local version of the mod now instead of the workshop version. So basically what happened is, in patch 1.29, this mod, this mod's been around for like two years, and in patch 1.29, it worked fine. Uh, digging uses the canals system, the Great Works system in, in EU4. So as you dig, it like makes progress on it, and then it, it completes, and everything's fine. Paradox broke it in 1.30, and uh, we're still waiting for them to fix it. And my understanding of what's going on with the... And but our mod creators is they're just waiting for Paradox to fix it. So sometime in the next year or two, maybe, it, it'll work again. In the meantime, I'm going to use uh, low stacks fix because it works great. So um, I'm also considering reaching out to them on their Discord just to say, hey, do you guys want to maybe consider using low stacks alternative? Right, so I was trying to explain what happened. So I was playing as like the dwarves, right? Uh, trying out low stacks alternate thing, and I kind of accidentally became a Lich King. And magic is an, is a thing, and it's way cooler, way cooler than I expected. So, um, I've kind of messed around with it a bit, right? Like, if you have the estates, like, yesterday we were messing around with it a little bit. If you are a... <laughs> incompatible because I've got the thing. So we are this one now, right? So if you have estates, then you have access to the mage estate, which lets you cast spells. And the spells are ten-year things that, like, do a thing. But that's just part of it. There's an entire event chain-driven magical system for individual mage characters that can cast spells once a month that do all kinds of stuff. It's way more in-depth than I imagined. Every time when it is crashing, send the... send fix the canal system, then they will maybe get the hint. Well, sadly, I don't think Paradox is really interested in my feedback anymore, but, uh... Yeah, so we had recently formed the actual original Dwarvish Kingdom. We're all... Ah, mm -hmm, that thing. And so we have access to the mages which means that we can cast spells using this thing. Once every 10 years, we can cast a spell. Our air... I think our air was actually a mage, and we killed them. So I looked into the code a little bit, because I can't help myself. Trying to figure out like what the criteria are for, for whether or not you can get a mage air. There's a couple ways to do it. Um, if you have the mage's estate, you can use your once per 10 years spell cooldown to try to create a mage. But um, if you're an adventurer, it's actually a lot easier. There's only one requirement. Have no air when the event fires that decides who your next air will be. And have 50 prestige. If you have at least 50 prestige, one of the options is a wizard. And then once you get the wizard as your main character, then you get to cast spells. And it's cool. So... Basically where we're at is... Uh, we finished the disaster, we we formed the country, like, I kind of want to play deeper just to see, like, what happens, but at the same time, I, I also want to, like, try some of these other features. So it's kind of up to you guys. If you want to, you want to, like, you know, restore, there's still, like, a major thing we can do. We can restore the Dwarven Empire if we own all 25 of the, of the holds. <clears throat> there's a lot more holds that need to be recovered, the entire mountain range, basically. Or, alternatively, there was one other thing that I noticed, which is that if you go to the start date... Which I can just do it this way. If you go to the start date, the requirement for adventurers to have access to wizards is either have 50 prestige, which does... That, that's kind of a problem with dwarves, right? They can technically get wizards, or, or, you know, sorcerers, or whatever you want to call them. The problem is that because they live to be 200 years old, and the event fires as soon as you have no air, you can't get 50 prestige on day one, so... You basically have to somehow have your air die, or 
or your king has to die and you have to have over 50 prestige. Otherwise, the dwarves just live too long. It's so hard to get a wizard dwarf. Fortunately, there are two tags in the game that don't have to have that prestige requirement. They are the Sword Covenant and the... I think it's the Order of the Iron Scepter. It's these two. These guys can always get mages as their heir, and they are also adventurers at the game start. The one drawback to them is that I believe they are human. So, it's kind of cool to be like a dwarf mage because they live to be up to 200 years old, so they can like learn lots of magic and stuff. But, um, it's also kind of a downer because like, you want to click the button to make them into a battle mage, which makes them into a badass general, but if you do that, then your dwarves kind of lose their immortality because of the general death pulse. It's like a... I don't know. As, as far as I know, there's no way to block it. Like... Um, if you make your ruler into a general, then the death pulse is based on their actual age, regardless of whether or not you give them immortality as a trait. So they'll still die. But the advantage to playing as a human sorcerer mage guy could be that, you know, you just let him die. Whatever. So you could have a whole bunch of battle mages. How deep can you actually go? Like, what's the deepest that you can make the hold? We got to level 6, working towards 7. Like, how many levels are there? 10? You can go to 10? Go to 11? Turn it up to, turn it up to 11, man. Alright, so we're gonna try one of these two then. Because I don't want to, I don't actually want to play as a dwarf because, like I said, it's just so, it's really awkward to try to, to ensure that you have a mage heir. And if we play as one of the two tags that are human that have uh, the ability to always have mage heirs, then we can just do that. Magister, no ruler. So in our dwarf campaign, this guy was like stupid, huge and strong. I don't know why. Uh, Sword Covenant, they just have adventurer ideas. They, they both have adventure ideas. Uh, this one's got 9 development, this one's got 6. But they migrate, so it's not like that matters either. So how do we choose? Does it matter? Do you want to take the humans into the tunnels? We could. We, uh, the humans are not they are not a subterranean species, though, so... They would take a penalty to taxes and production if they tried to settle holds. Plus, they can't dig. They can't dig until... Dwarves can always dig. I think it's kobolds and goblins can dig on, can dig on like, admin tech 7. And I think everyone else can't. I, I don't think they can dig at all. All right, I choose this one. Let's go. <laughs> the one with the cooler name. See, but that's subjective. What do you think is the cooler name? All right, so we're out in the open. We, we happen to know the lay of the tunnels a little bit more since the last time we played. We are led by Knight Captain Emil the First. He's 31. Uh, we are the Sword Covenant. We are an adventurer government type. Same as the previous campaign. So we start off with a colonist. Um, just one colonist. We are human military. No major effects. Morale of armies plus five. Morale of navies plus five. Human administration. Ultra conversion cost is reduced and all power costs minus 2.5. I, I kind of like this. This makes me think of, um, you know, Dungeons and Dragons or something where humans are just kind of you know, not special, just just kind of average at everything, but just, you know, sort of excel at diversity or flexibility or something. All right, so um, we can migrate. That's the thing we can do. The mod is D&D &D inspired. Okay. All right, the best node is that one, then this 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 one. We live way over here. So the nodes that we're in suck, like real bad. Any high development that we should work toward? Where should we migrate toward? You guys want to, I don't know, we, like over time, we're going to choose which direction to go. Migrate. Uh... We like if this guy weren't here, we could go. If he moved, we could go all the way down here, get down to this area. Go south. I like tunnels. I mean, I have no problem going into the tunnels as a human adventurer. We're probably not going to settle, though. So we're just be, we'd just be, like, moving around murdering people. Like, like actually adventuring with our battle mage dude. He'd be awesome. 
So we got some missions. Uh, Ebon power of 150. Total development of 150. Then we gain some stuff. Total army of 75% of force limit. We get morale of armies and militarization of state. Get high prestige. Gives us 50 dip, uh, diplo rep for 50 years. Any ally has enacted the adventure company. So we can we can make a friend. And then we get trust with them. Probably like with the, uh, the other thing. We're not going to colonize, so I'm just going to take Native Uprising Chance to try to make it safer to walk around. And, uh... Let's just migrate onto the other thing here. This one's actually got some development to it. Oh, by the way, I did learn how to access the cooldown. On migration. This is going to blow your mind. Ready? Watch this. Let me know, on the screen, when you see the migration button. I'll wait. It's actually on the screen right now. It's right here. See? Just look closely. See how it says return province? You cannot return your capital province? Yeah. I mean, super obvious, right? You click that. <laughs> and then you can see your migration cooldown right there. <laughs> it's really silly. So this isn't... I don't think this is Paradox's fault. This is the... Okay, so we're like a... We're a native... Somehow, it, it's because Anbanar mixed migration mechanics with theocracies instead of natives. So natives wouldn't have this type of setup, right? They have... Their, their interface is slightly different. It's just kind of awkward, but it works. Also, uh, just... just Going back to the topic of dwarves. One thing that uh, we didn't consider when we switched to the old gods or whatever for the dwarves is that we looked everywhere for like modifiers that reduced construction time and it's really hard to find, right? I actually last night took the time to look through like all policy pairings. It's really hard to find construction time. Guess what happens to be in Regent Court's deity selection? That's probably worth staying Regent Court religion for. Just to dig deeper, faster, man. 25% construction time on all of your holds? Like, when you're when you're doing it over the course of what? Some of those holds take 6 to 12 years to dig. 25% construction time is nuts. Anyway, um, yearly devotion, monarch administrative skill. I don't know if these things will work when we spawn our heir as soon as I unpause. It might, actually. And we aren't playing as a dwarf, so does it? Do you think it works that way? Does the having monarch administrative skill on this character affect the stats for the heir? I think it should. I think it should. What are we humans? We're humans, yeah. We could also just take morale of armies since we're out in the open, and it's it's scary. That seems like a reasonable starting position for me. And apparently, we're already at seventy five percent of our force limit because I migrated off of a. I probably migrated off of grain, that's my guess. So our force limit went down. Okay, the first step, at least two, currently one, all owned provinces have a core and any all. Alright, so they want me to settle. I don't want to settle. I'm, a, I'm an adventurer. In a war with the Cassus Belly Anti-Monstrous Conquest. Gives us Marlowe armies and 5% infantry combat ability. If we have 50% more trade power, we get a thing. Number of provinces and states needs to be at least 8, and we have to have some gems. And then we lose money. Sweet. What a... <laughs> Looks like there's going to be a follow-up event, but <laughs> it's just... Sweet! I can lose money! Nice. Number of provinces and states at least 3 while producing some gold. Alright, let's see if we can find an ally. Lots of people want to be friends. How about we ally the other guy? We'll be, we'll be friends forever. BFFs. They don't know who I am, apparently. Well, set my lines, bro. Let's be friends forever. Cooperation. Capital. All provinces in the Silvervord area are owned by us. I don't want to settle in the Silvervord area. They just want me to, like, squat, like, right here. But I don't want to. Remember, there's some ruined city provinces to the east. Ruined city provinces. I mean, you mean the, the surface hold? 
Or are you talking about actual... I mean, these, these are urban, right? Urban terrain? Urban is kind of like uber farmlands. It changes to where you are, so they just want us to settle wherever we are. Okay. So it's not forcing me to settle in our start location. Okay. Okay, our own crowns, a uh, number of grain problems. Yeah, see, all this stuff requires me to have, like, multiple provinces, which I'm just, I'm just not going to do it. I want to be an adventuring battle mage. That's what we're going to do. So I guess we're not doing a lot of missions. That's fine. Form our own country. Country changes to Covenblad. Legacy of Adventures. Okay. Form the Blade Marches. Ebentech 7. We can enable and act Blade Marches Kingdom. Yeah, again, I don't want to settle, so it doesn't really matter that much. Don't need that. Don't need State Firearm Regiments. Gain 50 Adventuring Efficiency. Okay. That's pretty powerful. Great start. We're going to want to, I think, just bump up adventuring efficiency like right away. Uh, shoot, I could have done that in a better order, actually, because getting a powerful mage heir costs us advent adventuring efficiency. I could have hired the mage, then done the click, and we'd have 10 extra. Boo! All right, so 70% chance that we... I, I figured out what the event is saying here as well. I always was kind of confused by why it presents you with two legal heirs at age 30, both with strong claims. It's because it's a 70% chance that it's a man, and a 30% chance that it's a woman. That's why. It just doesn't say that it'll be a woman. So, we're going to get a powerful mage heir. We are adventuring mages. Let's go. Ooh, nice. Valance. Shall we name Valance? Valance is apparently a woman. That's weird. Doesn't seem like a woman name. What is her name? What's a very... Good mage sorceress name. Either like an actual good name or something that makes me laugh. One of the two. <clears throat> Morgana? What's that from? Fiona? Yennefer. Hey, Yennefer's from uh, that thing. Sure. I like Yennefer. She's kind of sneaky hot. Sneaky hot. Cool. Alright, so Knight Captain Emil is not a mage, so we don't get to do mage stuff until after uh, he dies. But we'll start doing mage stuff soonish. Yeah, we did a poll earlier and we're gonna we're gonna focus on mage type stuff today. Let's make our guy into a guy, because I kinda want him to die. We might as well drill, because we uh well, we actually have a colonist, so maybe we don't drill. I could attack this guy. This is a another adventurer. They are Redfoot Halfling. So how, what's the easiest way to find out if someone's monstrous? I forget. We could maybe use opinion map mode. So everyone that hates us is probably monstrous. So I could like colonize this province to get adjacency to the Severed Ear, but they're allied to people already. We can also pick up some more alliances. Unlike the dwarves, oh, actually we only have one, one relationship slot. We could get an extra if we get the marches out of control. But, uh, no, we're, we're adventurers. We adventure. We try to rush for Miltech 4. I think I'm going to just push this up. And rather than 1444, since we got Yennefer, I'm just going to console in 48 military points since I did those clicks in the wrong order. Whoopsie. It's basically like 1444ing, except it's a lot less time spent, you know? First things first is we're going to get our adventuring efficiency all the way to 100 because it gives us money. Ooh, our captain is a bold fighter. Sick. So we get uh, land leader shock from that and land leader shock from our religion. So our generals are actually going to gonna be kind of good. Wait. D-stab. Yeah, so if you click on the thing and then you click cancel, you can see your cooldown. Basically, it's like negative three stab lets you go down to about a 300 day migration time. I, did, I didn't do a spreadsheet, but I had like seven calculators open at one point. Um, you get about 14.85 or something Monarch points per month if you have negative three stab. And you can have like up, 
uh, about five monarch points a month if you stay on zero stab. And since you don't care about unresting your capital, there's really no reason to to try to stay um, on positive stab or to like go for prosperity because you're, you're moving, right? So no stab. We don't need no. We don't need no stinking stab. Okay, we can rival the Blood Gorgers. They're allied to Severed Ear. Severed Ear's got 3k troops. These guys have 2k troops. We have more than that. Uh, actually, that means we can do Monstrous Conquest against this guy quite easily. I can use a Humiliate War. I mean, show strength, get the Humiliate off right now seems great. Um, maybe the next 48 military points we spend on the... Ah, shit, I'm at negative 3 stab already. I can't declare war. Son of a gun. 1444. Frack. <laughs> you guys want to just console it in? I mean, it's just, I didn't save, so I would, I mean, we would lose Yennefer. It's silly. It's silly. It's just whatever. But out of curiosity, how long until we can actually migrate? Because maybe we want to wait till the next migration. See, that's only going to take 443 days right now. Wait a minute, it's 443. How come the dwarves were like 300? Maybe it's different for humans. Maybe dwarves have like a hidden modifier to their migration time that I don't know about. That could be. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this war. So we'll go to negative two. We'll wait until this guy uh, is a valid war deck. Do the humiliate. Uh, I don't think we have any other valid rivals, so we're just gonna try to get the humiliate for splendor growth here. We can totally beat these filthy halfling things or whatever they are. I don't know. They're bad guys. That's all that matters. Nice. Land attrition reduction. His army's gonna be here or here, probably. Probably get our merchants out there doing stuff. Having only one diplomat again feels kind of bad. Um, okay. Are we migrating? We're going to migrate somewhere. We're, we're going to make choices. I don't know. I'm thinking we're going south this campaign. I think we roll a general here because, uh, well, I don't care if we lose stab if our king dies, but um, he's really bad compared to what he could be because we have two guaranteed shock pips. So he's like really bad. So I'd like to get another one, I think. got three troops out there somewhere. We'll park just enough troops here to do the siege and then send the rest over here so that he doesn't come try to fight anything. He might try to come siege my capital or he could be fighting rebels somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> so as soon as we get to 48 military points, we'll hire one more general. Apparently they want to just like come fight us. Okay. I don't think... Oh, he was going to Westwatch. Never mind. Gotta be fast. Alright. Who shall lead? I only have enough Monarch points for one general, so you need to be good. Minimum roll of two shock pips. So four to nine pips. First name in chat that I trust. That always rolls well. Always. Bookworm. A moderator. Bookworm, you are a good guy. You wouldn't you wouldn't do me dirty. See? He's so good. Sick. What a nice guy. Do we have huge reductions to cost like the dwarves? We don't. We have 24% reduced maintenance cost. I don't know if we're gonna keep these calves. They're pretty expensive. 0.4 ducats a month. We're actually making some money. We could maybe run an advisor. We want to get to military tech four. Um, I think we do run this layout, this guy. Don't need missionary strength. Um, you know what? I don't have any real need need to like collect money, so let's just run advisors across the board. 
Let's grab Bookworm. Let's put him on the secondary participant siege with the extra siege pip, because we want to knock out the secondary participant first. So we want that siege to happen first. Bookworm is a good guy. Everyone let Bookworm know that he's a good guy. How how well did he roll? He rolled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven out of up to nine, so. Top three, pretty good. 